tonight we're checking out the Veil Nebula. We have the Advanced VX mount from Celestron, the 8 inch Evolution, the ASI Air Pro and Wi Fi extender. We have plugged into a 256 gigabyte card with a guide scope and mini guide camera. And then we have the Hyperstar from Star Arizona here with the um, the filter drawer with the L Extreme Extreme filter in there, and then we have the ZWO ASI 294 MC Pro um, color camera with this 3D printed skin on it, and it helps keep the camera cool, um, blocks it more from ambient temperature. So, anyways, it's a pretty nice setup. Um, This little box controls everything. It's the computer and um, it's the ASIR Pro. It's got its own internal memory. And then I have the 256 gigabyte USB card. This is the Wi Fi extension um, just have here with the phone mount. And then we have the main camera hooked into the, the there's a main camera cable. This cable goes to the hand controller down here, straight into the bottom of it. Um, and then this is a 50 millimeter guide scope with a uh, with a helical focuser. So you can see it going up and down and getting closer and shorter. And then underneath that, we have the um, USB-C cable running straight to the back of the camera. This uh, little camera is amazing. It is a, um, runs off a USB-C. It's a ASI 120 Mono Pro, I'm sorry, Mono Mini. Um, it's got a tiny little sensor there but that sensor locks onto a star via this guide scope right here and um, goes to the computer which controls and locks onto the star not letting the mount move away from the star so instead of tracking and having to do a really good alignment all you have to do is find a star lock onto it with the software in the iPad and then um, this computer will send micro adjustments to the mount and make sure you never leave that star, no matter how far it tracks throughout the night sky. And it's cool because I was just taking a, images of the Veil Nebula and it was on this side pointed up over here. But then once it got too far, it shut down the imaging sequence, flipped the telescope, turned it all the way around. It's called a meridian flip. Um, and then started shooting from this way so it can smoothly continue so it wouldn't run into anything. Um, it's got a pretty good limit set on it. Also, one thing that's really cool is um, I 3D printed this. So the... the this mounts the advanced of VX. It's an equatorial mount. Um, it's got two uh, 17 pound counterweights on it, but it's got a polar scope that runs straight through the axis. So you see how it's pointed up? Um, sorry, <laughs> let's go this way. It's pointed up 32 degrees straight to the North Star. Um, Polaris you can see it out there so that 32 degrees um, I have it locked down and set right here via this controller or this uh, this screw this moves this the whole scope up or down um, and anyways you can't really see it but it moves the whole scope up or down but once you think you're in the right position and put the mount facing north, 
you unscrew this, and this is a polar scope running through the axis. So I have to look through this and find um, Polaris. If I can shut off this light with my finger. Anyways, you can see there's a little map in there with the Big Dipper, Polaris. It tells you exactly where Polaris should be. Um, and so that's really cool. But this scope, this guide scope doesn't have its own lighting system. So uh, you have to kind of try to see the map and the star at the same time without any light. And it's very difficult, and everyone um, wrote Celestron and asked for an update. They haven't done it yet, but you can see once this is turned all the way, um, once the telescope is turned uh, straight, it shuts it down. It, shuts, it closes it so that no dust can get in. Um, I have a cap for that, but I don't use the cap. So when, to, when it's turned up like this is when you find Polaris. So you do that, you lock it down into place with that. But I 3D printed this little gadget that lets me connect this light, this little red light. Um, it's got a resistor on it so it can get dimmer. Anyways, it just pops in right here. And that's enough light to illuminate that map while I look through the polar scope. So it's a really nice little little um, little print that somebody made. And this light comes from one of the uh, finder scopes, the nicer ones that come with a light. So it's just a quarter inch 20 um, thread. So it's really cool. Um, I thought that was a really fun little, little experiment. I didn't think it was going to work. Works perfectly. Anyways, we have the Anchor Powerhouse 2 800 plus the Celestron Power Tank Pro because this, um, what are you doing, Leo? Oh, he's chasing the light. <laughs> so this, uh, takes... 10 amps because it's got um, it's got four DC 12 volt power plugs that you, so you can plug accessories into this and what's cool is when you plug it in on the on the iPad it shows power plug one two and three are active providing three amps or six amps each um, four and five are off, or number four off. So it's really cool. It's very intuitive and very, um, it's awesome. You can plug anything there. A hand warmer, you can plug anything. So, um, anyways. Very cool setup. I'm very happy. This is my baby now. Um, spent a lot of time planning and putting this guy together. And pretty much have all the pieces I want except um, I wish this was the 14 inch instead of the 8 inch telescope but I don't have a hyperstar for the 14 it's way more expensive <laughs> anyways hope you liked it check out the, the picture I took oh by the way the um, I printed this filter slider uh, the Hyperstar Starzona makes a filter slider box, and I showed you the L Extreme is in there. Um, I have a L Enhance in here. So I have three of these. I printed two of these boxes because I have six filters. I have ten filters, but I only have six filter drawers. Um, and I only bought two of the Starzona filter drawers that are act that are real. <laughs> But, um, since I printed this, I was like, uh-huh, I wonder if you can print a filter slider. What do you know? Yep. So I printed six filter sliders, so I didn't have to buy them at $22 each. 
um, but this is the stock one and on the actual uh, Hyperstar man this light shows all the dust on the app actual Hyperstar um, it's got these magnets so it pops in and pops right out it's really cool really simple practical the best so this is an Ellen Hans filter I want just wanted to show you um, because you can't see through it it only allows in um, a very small narrow band of light it allows oxygen which is a very thin line of blue and then it allows hydrogen so that's the dark red so you can kind of see the blue and the dark red and it lets through but anyways really cool I was really proud of this little filter drawer that I printed um, it's really fun. I haven't put all the filters in yet, but anyways, I have two of these. Here's a dark filter to take dark frames. It's just a completely black filter to seal shut the, the camera sensor because, um, because when you take images, there's a lot of noise and fuzz and light. And sometimes there's vignetting, which is like a blackness um, so it's like a, like you're getting tunnel vision and, um, Ooh, there's a picture I took. <laughs> Hope you like it. This is, this is with only stack five stacked images. Um, gain was 226. I was taking 120 second long exposures, I think. Uh, it's not showing it because I turned off the ASI, but the can the picture's still up here, so it's really cool. Um, anyway, so the dark frame or the dark filter, uh, you take the same amount of exposures you took with the light, and you basically you add them together, and then you can kind of um, he's following the shadows. You can, uh, you can get rid of any of the whiteness in the back, any of the haze, any um, flares, or any reflections with a completely dark background. So you add them together. Um, anyways, I'm going to turn off this mount so it stops tracking and head inside.